Welcome back to Santa Pod and the SBRC Summer Nationals for the third round of the MSA British Drag Racing Championship for the Pro Mods. We have Mark Hartvelt from the Netherlands, Marco Mariochat from Germany, returning favourites like Mick Payne and Jean de Lamont all the way from the south of France, as well as a cast of in-form racers, including Andy Robinson, Bobby Wallace and Wayne Nicholson, Kev Slyfield in the 6.1 second blown bird, and Andy Wright taking the wheel of the hot rod this weekend. So nine teams here chasing just eight elimination places with one day's qualifying and one day's racing. First out on the track in qualifying, that beautiful blower sound, that's Mark Hartvelt. Getting very close to the wall with a beautiful new Voodoo Hemi. Did get down into the six threes at the main event, looking for more of that this weekend. Next out we got Mick Payne. Ever improving with a Camaro on the tightest of budgets, but you wouldn't know it most of the time. Mick a little bit all over the place on this one, goes through with a 776 at 192. Terrific burnout as always from Jean de Lamont with the Nitrous Camaro from France. Coming out alongside another one of the foreign competitors, that's Marco Mariochat with the Cerakote.de 53 Corvette. Now Marco with this car ran down in the 6-1, 6-13 back at the national finals last year, hoping for something pretty close to that again this weekend. Jean Dillamont jumps through stage so he won't get a time. Marco's off and running though with not too many problems at all. Opens his account with a 6.35 at 2.28. Andy Wright with the Lucas Oil Hot Rod. Far side of the racetrack. Him and Bert Englefield swap driving duties throughout the season. Taking on Kev Slyfield. Kev with a lot of shape and out of shape as well. Well, Andy gets back in it, Kev backs off. 7.77 for Kev and a 7.28 for Andy. So, the other part of the Andy show. Andy Robinson with the NGK Anger Management Camaro being guided into stage by the crew. This is a rematch of, uh, well, quite a few races so far this year. The final back at Easter was between this pair. Off and running, great side-by-side -side run again in the first session. 6.18 for Andy Robinson. And watch on board again. You can see Bobby pull out in front, but just the sheer horsepower of the Camaro got him at the finish line. Yeah, the main event track was really tricky for us. Um, and we, we were either side of the window. We were either not enough power and we shook, or we had too much power and we shook. But um, we tested yesterday. Um, we've changed a lot of the things on the car. We've got um, some new rear suspension components made the car a little different and, and that was the first good run with the new stuff so yeah good stay pleased number one at the moment sure but it won't stay like that so we, we we'll move on we'll try and uh, make the car go a bit quicker it's a bit lazy in the first 330 anyway and it looks like we dropped the cylinder but it came back so we think that's a plug lead so we'll fix that and hopefully next next uh, qualifying session will go a bit quicker yeah it's it's not bad so we, we were thinking to be a little bit faster, but it's a good baseline. So I had some shake uh, after the 60, 60 foot, so I had to go off the throttle. But uh, at the end, I'm, uh, I think it's a good baseline. So consistent is, is, this what, is what we will arrive this weekend. So, Is the track very different to last event? I don't think so. I, I, I don't see, uh, we had problems with our shocks at the last event, so it's difficult to say. But I think the track is fine.
So we're on with Q2, Mark Hartvelt. Car moving to the left once again, but he's got hold of it. Drives it all the way down the centre line. 6.41 at 2.16. I have to mention Wayne Nicholson unfortunately couldn't get reversed after his burnout at the start of this session so he's down to one shot. Next up Andy Wright with the hot rod taking on John Dulemon. Now John actually bumped through stage and didn't get a time. Andy Wright did. I'm sure he's looking to improve on that though. Hopefully back down in the sixes. Well Andy Wright over towards the centre line as well, drags it back quite expertly but Jean de Lamont is long gone to a 6.71, 2.16, No improvement for Andy. Kev Slyfield and Marco Mariachat this time round. Kev was way down in the 6.1s back at the main event not too long ago. Marco looking to get back there again, Marco actually rolls the beam slightly, Kev out of shape. Marco nails it all the way through to a 6.27 at 2.30. Well, a couple of drivers picking up in this session. A couple more drivers looking to do the same thing. Andy Robinson, we heard from him earlier. And Bobby Wallace. Andy Robinson, we shake off the line. And Bobby Wallace actually backs out of it early. Still goes 6.75, but doesn't improve his elapsed time. So going into the third and final qualifier, Andy Wright behind the wheel of the B&A Racing Hot Rod is number six, so he'll be looking to improve. Mark hartvelt has been stepping things up in the new car. He's in at four with a 6.41, but Wayne Nicholson is yet to qualify. Kev Slyfield at number eight, still trying to regain the 6.1 second form from the main event. And here's his last chance to do just that. So Wayne with a very short burnout, I guess the team is still suffering from a lack of reverse with the Emax Lucky Devil, but they never give up, they never stop trying, as does Kev Slyfield's team, hoping to nail a good one on this last qualifying run, and still, unfortunately, shake for Kev, but he keeps his foot in it because he knows he's got to get in the show. 6.50 and a 7.65 at over 200 for Wayne Nicholson. Now that run of Wayne Nicholson just got him in the show just 765 at over 203 obviously the speed is good the ET is what counts now the man on the outside looking in at the moment is in the next pair Mick Payne with the Camaro so it will either be down to him or Andy Wright well both a little lazy off the start line but Mick Payne's trying to keep it going to get in the show and he does it by nearly two tenths of a second 747 at 186 no improvement for Andy Wright now that does mean though that Wayne Nicholson is actually bumped out of the show unfortunately for them obviously good news though if your name's Mick Payne so last chance for these two as well Mark Hartbelt, John Dulemon John suffering from the same problem again rolling through stage Mark Hartler on a flyer on the far side of the racetrack and he goes to number one with a 6.17 at 2.31 no improvement for John Dulemon well, I don't think Mark Hartler just didn't care because they're very happy with that one showing the form that they know Andy Robinson and Marco Marischat, the last pair down the racetrack, side by side, 6.31s, no improvement for either of them. Now that's what you call a race actually, Andy pulled ahead slightly at the finish line, but they were neck and neck or door handle to door handle all the way down. So at the end of qualifying, it's the Voodoo Hemi Superbird with backing from the Sick Pack Speed Shop in the Netherlands at number one, closely followed by Andy Robinson, Marco Marischat, and in and forth, an ever-improving Bobby Wallace. Yeah, yeah, it's going really well, really, really well. Um, running PB after PB is, has been brilliant. Um, we didn't make the final qualifying pass there because uh, on Q2 we burnt some frictions in the gearbox. Um, so we thought rather than just do the one gear, we'll check the whole lot and then come back out for eliminations. I know earlier in the year you thought maybe you weren't going to do every round, but if there's a chance of winning a championship, yeah, definitely. Yeah, now we're second in the championship. I think we'll definitely do all the rounds. Um, and I know at the minute there's only six points between me and Andy, so it's very close. Yeah, bizarre how it uh, how it was. <laughs> yes, we are happy. <laughs>
I'm guessing that you must be thinking, well, if we've managed this so quickly, we can start really tuning. There's going to be a lot more in the car, which is what you bought it and built it for, wasn't it? Yeah, it is. But, yeah, you know, we're now at the point, uh, make some small steps to going faster. Not, not big steps, but small steps. We make some uh, big changes today from zero to where we uh, stand now. Yeah, and now is it, um, how can I say that, uh, small steps to going farther. The car seems to be going nice and straight, handling-wise. Yeah, we have problems. It's going to the, to the left side. Uh, every time I have to uh, steering uh, to the right, so uh, yeah, we changed that setup tonight. Well, here are the first round pairings, and Mick Payne's got one heck of a job on his hands in his matchup here at the SBRC Summer Nationals at Santa Pod. So on with the quarterfinals, the round of eight. Everybody getting suited up and ready to go on race day. It's time to get the setups right, nail everything down, and one of those guys looking to do just that is right here. Well, two of them actually, but Bobby Wallace was in the sixes on both of his qualifying runs, and Kev Slyfield was a little off his usual great pace. He still went 6.50 with a lot of tyre shake. Any mistake from him again, Bobby Wallace will take this one. And he may take this by right anyway, because they've been running quicker and quicker the whole time, the Wallace family, with this beautiful Willis. This will be an absolutely great race, no matter what. So Kev Slyfield, far side, and a whole shot for Bobby Wallace. You can actually see that off the start line. Who's going to take this one? It's Kev by half a car length. 6.17 takes out a 6.35. One for the blown cars that time round. Big starting line advantage for Bobby Wallace. You can see again in replay, but the horsepower in the blow machine pulled away in the second half of the racetrack. You actually got a feel for Bobby Wallace a little bit. He's on every elimination run so far this year. He's done absolutely nothing wrong so whatsoever. Just unfortunately got outrun a couple of times, but that's why he's number two in points. Although maybe he might not be now after that defeat, but hey, we'll see how the rest of the season goes. Marco Marischat from Germany. Real good time in qualifying. Three very consistent runs taking on Jean Dulemont. Jean, as I said before, having trouble staging on the two-step. And he gets left for dead on the start line by Marco. A few tenths of a second advantage actually goes 6.30, 2.28. Nice, safe and consistent. So the Andy Show. One more time, Andy Wright, far side of the racetrack with the hot rod and Andy Robinson, the NGK Anger Management Camaro. This car has got five second capability, as I'm sure, as the BNA Racing Hot Rod. Let's see what they can do here. Well, it's Andy Robinson away first. Problems for Andy Wright on the launch. Well, they're both out of shape as well. Andy Robinson pedaling the car all over the place, but a great job of driving. 63 only 185 miles an hour. Watch that from the gantry. So nearly went over the centre line. Just put it back in time, though, to take the win. Yeah, you can actually see the centre line disappear out of view on that onboard shot. But the wind light's what counts. The last pair should have been Mick Payne taking on the Voodoo Hemi of Mark Hartfield, but unfortunately, Mark had issues with oil pressure when they warmed the engine and didn't want to take any chances. Everything on the car's new, and a very happy Mick Payne takes the win. Yeah, it's the first time we've been there, so but it's just good to get some more seat time, learn a bit more about the car, and not have no breakages yet. <laughs> Previous to this, you had a car with a similar sort of set of engine-wise that was a whole different ball game, a real heavy machine. How much of that actually translates across? Yeah, it reacts different and everything. Um, this is a lighter car, probably five or six hundred pound lighter uh, than the old car. Engine's more powerful for a start as well. So it's, yeah, it's totally different. You know, the other one was real good fun. And um, yeah, it was a bit of a wild thing, but this is a different animal. Yeah, we, we did struggle in qualifying. Uh, track's a little bit temperamental. We, um, we overpowered it two or three times, but yeah, we finally got the handle on it now. Yeah, I could see him all the way up the track. I could see him in my peripheral vision. Uh, he had me on the tree and then I pulled past him. I got tower shake, so then he pulls back past me. And then I pulled back. It was like nip and tuck all the way. And then just at the end, I had enough power to, to pull through. So it was good. But then the rain that had threatened all day finally arrived. But, I want to say as ever, the track crew did their awesome, usual job. 
and not long after we were racing again in the semi-finals. So, first pair. Kev Slyfield taking on Mick Payne. Now, on paper, Kev's been way faster than Mick, but, as you saw in the first round, anything can happen, and always does. Well, almost always does, anyway. Kev Slyfield would be the favourite. However, don't count out Mick Payne at all. This replacing the final. Well, Kev away from the start line first, but it doesn't look like the Thunderbirds running right. Mick Payne going all over the place trying to catch him and doesn't quite do it. 7-10 beats a 7-13. Watch that again in replay. You can see Kev get out from the start line first, but the car's obviously not running right at all. Mick Payne everywhere trying to catch him, but just ran out of racetrack. So onboard burnout this time from Andy Robinson with the NGK Camaro. He's taken on Marco Marichat. This should be a real, real good race. Both of these two have been very, very close on numbers throughout the weekend, through qualifying and on race day as well. Let's hope Andy Robinson has cured the uh, handling issues that plagued him in round one. Not handling issues that plague him this time though, unfortunately. He went before the green red light for Andy Robinson. Marco Marichat is given a gift into the final at 6.25-2.26. As Bobby Wallace and the Wallace Motorsport team look on, that six things up for our final. But a serious crash put the track on hold. And then after cleanup, time and threatening weather, the decision was made to call the event off, unfortunately. The driver, Andy Bomb, was injured, but OK. A testament to just how well these cars are built and the safety features that they all use. So these are the points at the end of round three. Andy Robinson still number one, but Kev Slyfield overtaking Bobby Wallace for the number two spot. The next round for the MSA Pro Mods is the Mopar Euro Nationals back here at Santa Pod at the end of July. And we look forward to seeing you all then. <laughs>